Don't buy stay. Oh, are you there? <laughs> I forgot to push the button. Okay, guys. We need some Palo Santo up in this biatch. Okay? Am I right? It is a rainy, rainy, dreary day. Let me show you. Yesterday, too. Okay, yeah. Just hanging out in my car. Where else am I? Before that, I was at work. Before that, I... I got a little more sleep last night. Um, yeah, I'm still happy about Cleo's news. Um, but I just wanted to jump on and say hi. I have a couple of things to say. Yeah, got a couple of things on my mind before I go home. Um, anyway, let's get some Palo Santo for Cleo. Let's make some hearts. It's such a miracle. C L E O C S Cleo Smith. I don't know what her middle name is. Thank you, dear God. Thank you, Archangels. Okay, now who knows what she went through? Um, but the, a weird story. I don't know if you guys know this or not. Um, a weird little clip that I heard on my lunch hour um, was that. They would take, they were, they had the guy locked up. He wasn't in the house. And that one of the reasons why they knew to go to this house, um, to look for Cleo was the fact that, I'm sorry, I'm like very overtired. So I find I, I'm spacing out today and I'm a little bit down about something that goes on at work in my world. Um, today was a better day, but, um, let me just say it this way and leave it alone, leave it in the atmosphere. Um, being a substitute is not easy because in that, yeah, you get to go in kind of when you want to, but it's like all different grades, all, you know, different classes and you forget people's names. Um, and there's different rules in different classrooms, but main thing is I feel like there's a level of even though I have like a million years of experience probably much more than the teachers that are there much more than the principal that's probably 24 um, people don't really respect you and you're in you're out you're in you're out I mean they know me basically in a couple of different schools because I've been going there since 2016 but um yeah, it's just not easy being a substitute. What else? What is easy in my life, usually? Well, my marriage. Um, oh, yesterday, for Cleo, I got my nails did. Okay? <laughs> I knew I was excited about something. Okay, finally, my nails. You guys have seen my nails since September being so terrible. Was it September or August? It was so long, and then I started uh, clipping them off myself, and then I bought the acetone stuff that supposedly takes everything off, and it didn't work. So my nails were like in a state of limbo. Let me just do a little bit more. Palo Santo up in this biage. Okay, I want to give a shout out to my friend, Kim Magical. Um, if we can have a prayer. Um, she has a channel called The Comeback. I hope everybody um, went over there. I don't know if she has any new uh, videos out. I know she did videos because she lost both of her daughters. But her best friend, Kay, um, is in the hospital, I believe, with COVID and complications. Please, um, everybody pray for Kay, for my friend Kim Magical. Um, her channel is a comeback. Um, you know, prayers up for her and a shout out for her friend. It's her very best friend who has helped her through a lot and she's been through so much with um, her, you know, the deaths of both of her daughters like a year apart. So please prayers up for her. Thank you. Let's just think Kay, I think her full name is Karen, but I, I can't remember. I'm praying for a lot of people. 
Um, anyhow, so that's one thing. And I, I just, I'm so happy I went back to the old place where I got my nails done. Um, getting my nails done just makes me so happy, especially if they do it correctly. And they were like, oh, we missed you, we missed you. And I was like trying to play cool, like, yeah, I just haven't been back. But they know their work and they knew that they didn't work on my nails for a while. But, um, you know, sometimes you want to try, you think the grass is greener, but it isn't. So I'm back, I'm back with my original place. And I mean, look how creative. This is called a pink French. And I don't know if Cleo's favorite color is pink. Um, whereas if I got it for for um, beautiful summer, I would have got purple. Um, but I just thought, I said pink. I want a pink French. I took a pink French. And I, want, I wanted in the white, I wanted it a V shape, which they had a little trouble with, but then I pulled up pictures and they did a great job. It's like even more creative than I even thought. And then on the tips of the white, and I usually never get this because it's like almost the winter and it's like rainy and stuff, but um, I, I'm so sick of dark colors. I'm really sick of dark colors, um, especially on my nails. Uh, you know, and like we're going into Christmas and Thanksgiving, I usually do like an eggplant, like the color of my shirt. I think this is a pajama top, but I wore it to work. <laughs> Coffee and chill, okay? Who cares? Nobody cares, nobody. Besides the kids are really looking at me and I don't, they didn't really make a big deal about my shirt. Um, I had two little boys say they hated my earrings. Hated, hated. Why would you hate a peace sign? Why? Okay, I don't know. Um, so anyhow, I got my nails done for Cleo, for the miracle of Cleo, and it really makes me happy just to like look down at them. It's like when you get your nails done for your wedding. Um, and it was, you know, it, it, it was about $65, but they had to take, it's a full set of new nails. You usually get a powder, I usually get a powder and a fill-in. I know I'm all over the place again, as usual, but um, I just said, you might as well just put the acrylic on there, but just cut them down short, because I gotta paint, or I'm actually not even the paint. Um, I'm taking a break with my painting and hopefully sell um, a few more paintings um, so that I have room, my dining room. Um, Anyhow, uh, so they said the guy that the reason why they went to this particular house where Cleo was at in one of the rooms was because the guy was seen buying diapers or pampers, right? But Cleo's four years old, so why would she need pampers? I didn't understand that, but I'm just reporting what I got. Um, and they said that the guy was seen in the store buying Pampers and everybody knew he didn't have any kids. And everybody in uh, West West um, Australia and really all of Australia was looking for a missing child named Cleo. So they got a tip, the FBI got that tip that this guy was at the store buying Pampers and they, everybody knew he didn't have kids. So they raided his house when he wasn't there. And in one of the rooms, they found Cleo, okay? So they're saying it was about 50 miles from the campsite and not too far from where they live, where Cleo's mother and father, stepfather live and baby sister. Um, but they're saying that they've determined, they've ruled out that there's no association with the parents, the stepfather and the mother being associated with anything to do with her disappearance. They've absolutely ruled it out. Now, the friggin' Australian FBI, and they had, I think, 50 to 150 detectives. Usually, like, there's one or two detectives, or maybe at the most five, but 100 to 150 detectives on it? They kick ass. They know what they're friggin' doing over there. So we should really take a clue. Tennessee, New York, um, Florida, all the places where kids are, you know, trafficked 
trafficked or um, stolen or missing. Texas is a big one. Um, you always hear stuff about missing kids in Texas. Texas is so big. And the Amber Alert is freaking going off on my phone all the time. I don't remember it going off as much in New York. Trust me. I don't remember, you know, I had a cell phone since, what, 1998. Uh, my phone never went off so much on Amber Alert as much as in Texas. Anyhow, um, so they're taking, they, so they got the guy, right? And they take, take him in for questioning. And I'm like, I guess they can't arrest him because unless they can link him and I guess they're doing the DNA and all that stuff, but I feel confident in them. So something happened when they were questioning him and he got blood was all over the place. People started screaming and I, I don't know what happened yet. I don't know if you guys know, put it in the comments, but, um, he started screaming, uh, blood was coming out of his head. I don't know if somebody, you know, did a little beat down thing, but, um, do whatever you have to do. But anyhow, well, maybe he tried to hurt himself and, you know, did something, stuck his head because he didn't want to go to jail. He knew he was in trouble. I don't know what happened, but he was, all blood was everywhere. So he's in an ambulance. He has a head wrapped up in the white, you know, white gauze. And the ambulance guy keeps on like pulling the sheet up every time the camera was going like, you know, to get him in focus, but you saw him. Um, and he looked like he was very dark, like a dark skinned, um, very wild kinky hair. And I think a mustache and beard. Okay. I never saw him in any of my visions, but remember, I never did a full vi I never did a full reading, sit down reading where I did the cards, my crime cards or any tarot cards. I just gave a cold reading. Um, and I just felt she was alive. Uh, but I'm so happy that she's back. And so let's find, you know, let's give them time to figure out the story. I'm sure they're going to figure it out. I just hope Tennessee and all the places, Hawkins County, and all the places that are looking for children. The boys, California, I forgot to mention them yesterday. They are always on my heart and mind, but I am so sorry. Like, I'm giving a list, and I'm so tired that I, I, I was like, everybody's going to say, oh, you know, could, why didn't Katrina care about the boys? I always care about the boys. I've, did, I've done so many readings for them, and I will do another one. When I say it, I mean it. I will do a, a reading, another reading for Sincere and Classic. Oh, and there is an update. There is an update. What was going on yesterday? Okay, I don't, I think this was from yesterday or maybe the day before. But apparently, word on the street and word on the news was that Sincere and Classic's father is out looking and was at a vigil. They had a vigil for, because it's been 10 months since Sincere and Classic or in an Orson West have been missing. Okay. Why does everybody have to look at me in my car? I'm just pulled over in my car. Okay. Everything's fine. I'm just pulled over. Okay. Let me sage it up in this bitch, in this biatch. That is my car. I'm allowed. It's America. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm very cranky. I'm trying not to drink until Friday and, um, it's Wednesday and you know, I, I think it was Sunday, but I didn't drink Saturday and that was like a rare, a rarity. Um, but I did drink on Halloween, which was Sunday, not heavily. Um, but I just said to myself, um, self, let this be a week. We make it to Friday without drinking. And so Sometimes in my head, I'm like, I just would, I just like a little shot glass of my wine, but I'm trying not to. So, you know, I'm asking my guides and stuff just to make it to Friday. Okay. We'll see what happens. Okay. I'm not going to put too much pressure on myself because the more I think of it, the more I would like to have a, a relaxing glass. Anyhow, doesn't matter. We'll see what my guides do, but sincere and classic. Or in an Austin West. The father 
See, I thought they had two different fathers. I don't know where I heard that from one of the uh, things I read or one of the one of the YouTubers. I could have sworn they had both had a father with the last name Pettis. Um, and that Pettis was somehow the mother of the boy's um, her cousin or third cousin or something like that, but that they had two different fathers. And one of the fathers was supposedly in prison. Now all of a sudden I see on the news and I'm like, YouTube, um, I forget, was it 7 News? It might have been 7 News, Channel 7 News on YouTube um, that the boy's father and he says, those are my sons. So they just have one father? I don't know. Please let me know in the comments if you heard anything about it. How many minutes am I droning on? 16 minutes. Okay. I've been trying to make my videos a little bit shorter because nobody watches 30 minutes. Okay. So, I mean, I know people do seven hour lives, four hour lives. Nobody got time for that. Maybe some people do, but for some reason, a uh, 30 minute video by Katrina, Mystic Brady, they get down. They don't watch it. And every month or every week I lose last last a week ago I lost 26 subscribers. Then it went down to 23 subscribers. Um then I just looked at my analytics and it said minus 10. So like I have no idea. I'm just gonna try to please myself. Okay. Um I'm just gonna be me. I'm just doing me. All right. I don't know what else to do. I, I put out a lot of content. I put out over a thousand videos. I give, I do videos for free. I do every, every case that I do for the missing. I do not deal with money. I do, you know, not that everybody's trying to throw me money. I don't do it because there's a whole big scandal with that. And you notice I'm not involved with that. Okay. Um, just, you know, be very careful if you, if you think you're donating to the Summer Wells case or any, any case, because not always are people uh, honest. Anyhow. Okay. So the guy that says he's classic and sincere's father, I thought there was two different fathers. Okay. So I could be wrong. Please let me know. Uh, anyway, he says my whole life changed when when they went missing, okay? And I didn't know that he even was involved with their lives. I knew the mother was involved in their lives, of course, but I didn't know that any of the fathers were involved in the kids' lives, um, sincere and classic, okay? Um, but he said, my life changed, my life was destroyed, and he seemed very sincere, and he said, sincere, get it? Um, and, he, and he said, uh, I'm going to make it my business to the day I die to find them. So look for them and find them. Good, bad, you know, or indifferent. That's what I'm going to do. So they were having some sort of vigil over by the house that they probably didn't disappear from in uh, Cal City. Um, I've done so many videos on it. So is a, a lot of other people. And um, most, most people get most readers have gotten, and even people who have investigated, um, like Steve, what happened to Steve? I thought he was all over that case. I don't even see him anymore. Anyhow, um, I thought, I, I believe in my heart and in my third eye that they were, something happened to them and they got gone with, during the time they were in Bakersfield. I don't think they ever made it to that house. And as far as the other sons, they have four other sons. Um, people in that neighborhood said they never saw anybody. They never heard anybody, any kids. They saw the parents. They didn't see the kids. Okay, so who knows? When I have time and some energy, I will be doing um, a reading for them probably try to do it in my pool house 
But when it's like rainy like this, I don't want to drag everything out in there because it leaks. Um, there is a roof and stuff, but um, yeah, so I'll see, I'll see, or I'll do it in my car. Um, but I just have to concentrate and I don't, I can't have anybody, you know, like interrupt me and tell me this or that. Um, or even dogs, my dogs will interrupt me. So the other thing I want to talk about, I have a beautiful, oh, I have a lot of beautiful subs, of wonderful subs that are very supportive of me and loving to me. And I want to thank you. I want to say namaste to you. Um, I really appreciate it and it makes me feel good when I'm having a blue day or I'm missing. <sighs> Sorry, nerd alert. Um, when I'm having a blue day or I just feel a little down um, or being homesick. Um, but one of my subs said, you always mention that you wrote um, some books. Where are your books? How can I get your books? Or where are your books? Okay. Well, you asked. You asked. <laughs> and I will show you. Okay. Here are the two books. And some people who know me know that I've shown this before, but I don't push my books enough. Okay. And I mean, they are not expensive. They're cheaper than my artwork. Okay. And my artwork is not expensive. Okay. <laughs> Just so you know. All right. <laughs> Anyhow, um, these are the two books. I'm very proud of them. They're self-published. I This one, I tried to shop around. I went, you know, um, I hit the old pavement um, and mailed out so many um, synopsis and transcripts to different places all throughout New York, Florida, England. Um, actually, England responded to me, um, not for my children's book, for a play, and they actually wanted to to, um, if I fixed it up, this was back in the nine, late nineties when I was getting my master's degree, I wrote a play and I mailed it out to England. Um, and they wanted to like perform it and stuff, but I was like a scaredy cat and you know, I, w I had young kids and had a teaching career that was very stressful and I felt like I couldn't do another thing. Um, and so they wanted me to fix something up and they also said about me taking a trip out there and I said my sister that lived in England she said oh my god why would you give up that opportunity but I had young kids at the time and I just really couldn't take another thing and so you know I had to say no I'm not going to fix up the play and you know to pursue it but I, I got a beautiful letter, you know, rejection, not a rejection letter. It was a rejection if I didn't fix it up, if I didn't like, you know, call with them and um, eventually have to fly out to England. But anyhow, I still have the play and maybe one day I'll read it to you guys. Um, it's a family play. It's called Aunt, Aunt Margaret's Funeral. Yeah, Aunt Margaret's Funeral. Um, yeah. Yeah. Because my Aunt Margaret and my Grandma, Grandma Brady, they died, um, and my father, they all died within a year of each other. It was very spooky, okay? Really odd. It was a really odd thing. Okay, anyhow. They wanted to stick together, those Bradys. And actually, my cousin Maureen, was she a Brady? No, she wasn't a Brady. She was a fox. Um, anyhow, <laughs> who's a Brady? <laughs> Um, so, okay, getting back, I'm sorry, I'm all over the freaking place. So this is my first book that I wrote. It was published in 2004. It cost me a lot of money. It was published in Canada for those people in Canada, um, a place called Trafford. And this is my heart. It's my soul. Um, and my daughter, um, did the pictures and I did the, she would draw the pictures and I would cut them out and collage them onto canvases or paper and that became the pictures so that's why she's involved in the book with me okay and just almost like Devin um helped me do that's us when we were younger we met that's my daughter's apartment everybody had to put their hand in um blue paint or purple paint 
on the wall. Okay, anyhow, so if you are interested in this book, I wrote this book because of 9 11. Um, I wanted to write something else, like my memoir, and I couldn't because the kids, there were so many kids in my school um, that lost family members in 9-11. They worked in World Trade Center, or they were firefighters, or police officers, or um, paramedics, um, or office workers uh, in the building, and they died, and they never came home. And so um, I wrote this book on their behalf, and it's, when is mommy coming home? And so it deals with how you can positively funnel that energy, that um, sadness, the depression of a family that is five kids that loses their mother, not in the World Trade Center, but they lose their mother um, through kill, illness, not killness, illness or cancer. Um, and you know, how they all react to it, starting from a second grader, then a third grader, a fourth grader, a fifth grader, a sixth grader, and I think the oldest is a seventh grader. Um, so, you know, it's a big family and who helps the family and how the father deals with it and an aunt comes in. So it's a really good book. It's it's um, trying to create, um, save up to have it republished so that I can have some hard copies because, you know, everybody always wants a hard copy. I mean, me. You know, when you're an author, you want you don't you you don't feel like you're a real author if it's just a soft cover, and you shouldn't feel that way. But um, I would just like some soft covers, but a couple of hard covers too. Anyway, if you want this book, this book is um, was it twenty five? No, it's twenty. It's twenty. This book is 20. I don't have that many copies until I get it republished, but I have some. Um, so if you want this book, it's really, it deals with the chakras too, because every page is different color. It's very involved. Um, you know, it has a lot of words in it. You know, you might have to read it with your kids. Um, but you know, it's, I, what I say about it is, it's for um, ages five through a hundred, okay? Because adults could read this book too. And it, especially anybody who's had a loss, okay? And then Tommy Extra, you know about this. I just published, I just did this um, self-publishing as well. And actually it was, it was more inexpensive. And I think there is almost the same amount of pages. Like this is, like 48 pages but some pages are just pictures and this one is yeah 42 pages um and this is about tommy extra and this is you know a, a good book about a uh, children's book that is helps kids deal with when you move from one place to another um and Tommy Extra is a little boy who was born with a brace on his, uh, well, he wasn't born with a brace on his leg. He had to get surgery on his leg. Uh, he always wanted to do things perfectly. And um, it just deals with bullies in school, learning problems, and has a fun story that, you know, I feel makes kids laugh. And I'm really proud of my collages. Um, Devin helped me with some of the pictures. I have a little um, shout out for Shanann is a unicorn over here. And then I have Bella, Bella Butterfly, for after Shanann's daughter, okay? Um, yeah, I just, you know, I'm proud of it. Um, it doesn't get much attention. And um, I was told in my head, you gotta start talking about your books, okay? Because they are good, I'm not just saying that. They are even more than my artwork, um, because it to write a book, even a children's book, people think, oh, it's so easy. No, it's not easy. Not it's so it's like every page I had a layout on the living room floor in my old house, you know, in Staten Island. This was all of my son went um, to Boy Scouts with his father, and they were going to be gone for the weekend, and so that was the time that I had to and you know I had work 
on Monday. So I had to lay out every single page. I had to say which, where every single page went. Because when you do a self-publishing, you have to do exactly what the layout is. You have to do everything. Okay? That's why it's such a um, friggin' accomplishment. Um, and at least with this book, when is mommy coming home? And the kids still today in the schools that I am here in Texas, you know, when we have time, when we're done with the work and we have like 10 minutes, you know, at the end of the day, I'll read some, some of the pages to them. I can't read all of it. Um, cause you know, it's, it's, it's too long, but I'll read some of the pages and they like it, but some, some of the parts are sad. Some of the kids would cry, but they always want to hear it. So I think to myself, um, you know, I wrote that book for so many kids, even though it does make you a little bit cry. Um, this is life, you know, and life happens to kids, not just adults and have th things go wrong in your family and you lose a family member, even if it's just a pet and you have to learn how to deal with it in a, in a positive way by writing art, talking about it, making up a poem or riddle, whatever it is, as long as you're getting it out, you're getting those emotions out. Um, but th I just feel like it was an accomplishment. And, um, back, back then in 2004, um, the principal actually did allow me to, um, sell my book. Um, I think it was, I sold it to the teachers for $10 and, um, to the kids, <laughs> probably $5. I mean, it was such a discount. And this cost me $5,000 to make. When it was all said and done, it cost five grand. I never made it back, but that's not the point. The point is um, some of the teachers put got a cake for me because there wasn't any other teacher in the building that ever wrote a book. Okay, so I'm proud of myself for that. I'm happy I had that moment. Unfortunately, the principal ended up being very jealous of me. And she, this was, book was um, in the teacher's room, which principals aren't supposed to go in the teacher's room. Anyway, back in New York, they're not allowed. Um, but she always went in there and she took it without paying for it. Okay. So then other teachers told me and I went into office and I was like, oh, you wanted that book? And she goes, oh, no, I was just looking at it here just so she wouldn't have to buy it. Anyway, it didn't matter because a whole bunch of kids bought it, um, even though it was discounted price. 